Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Joan McCabe, assistant to the chair, and have been with the MFA Visual Narrative Program since its auspicious launch in 2012. I'm honored to have been recently elected story godmother, although admittedly running unopposed. A warm welcome to every, everyone, and we appreciate your time and your focus tonight. The MFA Visual Narrative Program is the managing department for the Rizzo Lab, and we're excited to let you know more about all the spring offerings. Just a note that at 7 p.m. tonight, Nathan Fox, the chair of the department, will host an info session for the visual narrative storytelling course, courses on offer, apart from the Rizzo classes. This includes such classes as comics, poetry, graphic memoirs, comedy and storytelling, and more. I'll post the registration for that in the chat, and you can jump right over to that if you want after this. A little bit about the MFA and visual narrative program. We offer a fresh perspective and a bold alternative to traditional MFA programs. We do so by recognizing that a command of story is the most powerful and fundamental foundation that an artist can have in any creative profession. We approach this through multidisciplinary study ranging from character development with a theater director to world building with a game designer to the foundations of visual language with experts in children's books, branding, mapping, film, and photography. We welcome students from diverse backgrounds, including those without standard art training. A bachelor's degree in any area is acceptable. We're low residency. That means that during three summer intensive semesters at SVA in the heart of New York City, you attend courses supported by a network of industry and market experts. Throughout the four semesters of online study during the fall and spring, students are able to work remotely and travel without having to uproot their professional careers and family or change their personal lifestyles. I'm here tonight to kick off the continuing education presentation, but I welcome any inquiries about the full MFA visual narrative program as well. You can drop me a line at mfavn at sva.edu and we can arrange to talk in depth after tonight. We're very proud of the broad range of continuing ed offerings and thank Penn for his work bringing the Rizzo Lab to a prominent place in the printing community worldwide. And now I'll introduce you to Pan, who will launch the evening's festivities. Pan Terzis is an artist, printer, and publisher based in New York. He's the founder of the Rizzo Press Mega Press. In 2015, Pan co-founded the Rizzo Lab, a Rizograph studio based here at SBA. Since then, he has directed the curriculum and graphic and conceptual identity of the space as manager and faculty member. His work has been published by Nevis, Fanta Graphics, Landfill Editions, Vice Magazine, and others. And he's been exhibited across the US and internationally, including at the Elizabeth Foundation, Printed Matter Inc., the Swiss Institute, the Para Museum in Istanbul, Andreas Melos Presents in Athens, and the Greek Consulate in New York. He has worked with commercial clients, including Bloomberg Digital, American Apparel, Digitaria, Elsewhere Space, iBodega, McDonald's, Lurid Records, and others. Terzis is also the founder of the Rezo Press Mega Press. His artist books, zines, and print editions are in the collection of the MoMA Library, the Berkeley Museum, the New York Public Library, and the collection of Stanford University, among others. In November 2022, he curated Printing the Future, the Rezo Revolution, a sprawling art exhibit, exhibition of Rezo-based work at Diaphirma Gallery in NYC, featuring over 250 artists and over 300 Rizzo printed works from around the world. Take it away, Pan. Thank you, Joan. Um, and thank you all for being here tonight. Um, really excited to talk a little bit about the Rizzo Lab, about Rizzo printing, and introduce you to our, um, our amazing faculty and uh, who are each gonna talk a little bit about their work and the courses that they're gonna be teaching that are open for registration now and starting in only three weeks. So, um, you know, under pre-pandemic uh, conditions, we these sessions, which we kind of have uh, three times a year before each semester used to happen in person um, and participants will get a chance to, uh, to see our beautiful space. And um, after each of our instructors uh, would discuss their classes, you would end up going home with a nice little color chart with a sneaky um, course listing on, on the other side. But, um, but alas, of course, uh, COVID 
pushed us all, shut us down in, in addition to so many other institutions and uh, moved us online, which gave us a chance to launch the um, Rezo Lab Remote Series, a series of online classes where we had to figure out how to distill what it is um, that we teach in these classes focused on Rezo printing that uh, can kind of transcend the, the medium of Rezo printing itself. So that's, that's kind of a theme that I want you to keep in the back of your mind um, as, you, as you hear from all of us um, throughout the evening, that it's Rezo is the point, but it's also kind of the point of this is also what it also connects you to and, and what you can kind of distill from it. So um, of course, we came roaring back to in-person classes and in-person Rezo print access in the fall of 2021 after kind of a soft reopening in the summer of 2021. And, um, and you know, we, we actually, since then, we've added additional classes. We've added um, Aiden Fitzgerald, who's here tonight, um, teaching a, um, a class that's, that's, that's still relatively new, um, artist books and uh, reserve printing for um, artist books and abstract comics. Um, and we're still offering those online classes, plus the fact that, you know, these sessions are online allows, um, I'm sure there's some of you that are logging on from places far away from the New York City area. So I guess before we get started, the first question is, why Rezo? What is it about these funny little copy machines? I mean, they're not really copy machines, they're sort of, they're actually called duplicators that, um, that, you know, that, that's gotten so many different creatives from so many backgrounds, so many artists um, from different fields, cartooning, illustration, photography, design, um, excited to kind of stand around these clunky machines. Well, I think um, that actually, I should mention, weren't intended to make any of the things that, um, that are made in our space and our facility and that, and that, you know, like the kind of work that we're interested in using these machines to make. And I think um, fundamentally, you know, it's, it's really, I think two things. One is the fact that they are so, um, so versatile and they can, they can print so many different kinds of things. Um, and part of it, I think, is also the range of colors that you're able to achieve, um, that you're able to use with Rezo printing. Uh, the fact that these, you know, the Rezo graphs are, they're sort of like secret copy machines, um, or secret print shops. They, they look like copy machines, but actually Rezo is more like a print shop in a box. It functions a lot more like a press, a printing press, than a copy machine. Um, and for, even though these machines were really designed to make brochures, pamphlets, uh, cheap, fast copies, uh, you know, menus, takeout menus, um, the uh, brilliant engineers and uh, color designers at Rizo Kagaku Corporation of Japan um, continue to release not only these 11 colors that we have in one set of our, of our um, colored rooms at the lab, but um, up to a hundred plus very impractical colors that you know sort of set up the conditions for artists to find these machines and use them to make art. Um, there's a few examples of uh, some work that's been made by some of our former artists and residents. So in addition to the obvious application of Rezo for graphic art, um, illustration, comics, um, and so on, it can also be applied to photographic techniques. Here's a CMYK full color print by one of our former artist residents, Pixie Lau. Um, beyond just making films, beyond making publications, there's so much more you can do with this in addition to um, that, including installation work. So the Rezo Lab is a space that I was invited to start um, to help found by the chair of the MFA Visual Narrative Program, Nathan Fox, um, the program that Joan so eloquently described right before she introduced me. Um, and he reached out to me in the summer of the, uh, the spring of 2015 um, with the interest of starting a space at the School of Visual Arts that would take this medium, um, which you know, uh, different artists had started to use. And there was an awareness of this medium um, as, a, as a tool for, for, for you know, small publishing, publishing small editions of, of, uh, of zines and prints and make it available to the SBA community, but also uh, to the general public at large. So he reached out to me, he was referred to me by, um, by someone who knew I had started using Rezo printing my work and we had 2015 in the fall um, with just a few classes. We rapidly expanded um, to offer additional classes every semester, additional faculty, 
um, and continue to grow, um, you know, adding uh -huh. graduate classes, adding graduate workshops, um, adding an artist, artist in residence program. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of amazing how much our space has grown, um, not only as a facility and, and, and in terms of our course offerings and what we provide, uh, what we make available to our students as a, as a place to, to create work, but also um, as a space that can be used as a production facility by students that have taken a class. So after you take a class at the Rizzo Lab, you can come back and pay a lab access fee and continue to use the space. Um, the idea of the Rizzo Lab is we wanted to kind of chart a middle path um, that, that was going to be different from the way Rizzo's have, have been sort of deployed in educational facilities. So either, you know, from what I know, um, no other institution is trying to do what we do, which is um, we provide very intensive training. We require a full semester course, a full, you know, nine or 10 week course in the summer. Um, uh, or fall or spring um, before students can then use our space um, to, to print. Um, we have an open lab access uh, schedule. So outside of class time, students that are enrolled in classes and those who are um, have paid for open lab access pass are able to book time on our machines um, and basically run the machines themselves. So they're able to really experiment um, with the medium there's no limitations on how many prints and masters they can make. So the printing is unlimited. It's a flat rate. We didn't want anyone to be hampered by that. Um, and the way that works is that everyone really goes deep into the medium uh, from a variety of different approaches, depending on whose class you take, um, whose experience you benefit from, because we're all basically, you know, anyone using Rezo even today um, is a pioneer in the medium because this is really uncharted territory. Um, in addition to uh, our very busy bustling semester with our full course load of, uh, I believe we offer now five continuing education classes, two undergraduate classes, and um, you know, two boot camp training workshops, various graduate workshops. Um, at the end of the semester, after all of this printing and publishing and, and, you know, and trimming and binding activity, we cap off the semester with a print sale that in an exhibition, which is really open to anyone using the lab. So the print slam um, is a really special event where we take anyone's work who wants to, anyone who made anything that was Rezo printed at the lab, will take your work and we'll sell it for you. Um, and you get all the proceeds and it's sort of like a one day pop-up sale. Um, and really it's amazing to see, it's an incredible event um, in terms of just getting a sense of what was made that semester because the, the range is, is really all over the place, so. Um, that's a little bit about the Rezo Lab. We are coming up to the end of our eighth year as of this fall. We will have been around for eight years. Um, ten year anniversary is is creeping ever closer. So, and um, and yeah, in addition to because we don't have um, because you know I should say another another question people always have is, is whether they can take a class if they're not an SBA student. And of course, tonight is all about our classes that are open to the public. So um, because most of the people using our space are we're artists that are working in the field and using our facility to learn the medium, learn the process and you know, use it to make their own work. Um, we've, and some of them already have a pretty big following. We've, you know, the awareness of our space has spread pretty far beyond the SVA community itself. Um, and we've, here's an example of some of the press we've gotten. This was a feature on us um, that was published in uh, a Chinese design magazine called Design 360 Degrees that came out a couple of years ago. You can also check our, our website um, to get a sense of some of the work that's been made by our students. We have a, um, a gallery of student work and student work by students, faculty, and artists, and residents that was printed at the lab that we're kind of we're trying to constantly add to to really uh, showcase the diversity of what you can use these machines to make. Um, and that's a little bit about the Rezo Lab. Um, in terms of my own work, uh, I am a painter. Um, I do uh, illustration, commercial illustration work, um, and I've been using the Rezo printing process in my own work since 2010. So I guess that's well, almost 13 years at this point. All of 2020 is when I first laid eyes on a Rezo. But my, my roots are really in printmaking and that's sort of how I came to Rezo. I 
after school, I, you know, dove deep into the world of um, using screen printing and photolithography and other mediums to make, especially to make artist books, but also to make installations. And I was introduced to Rezo around 2010 when I had a friend who was trying to convince me to use this machine um, that he described as an automated screen printing machine because he knew I was very involved in making prints and making books. Um, and I, I really, you know, it, it didn't, I, I couldn't imagine what this thing would look like. I thought it might be either very heavy duty, very intense, uh, something that would take up an entire room. You know, maybe you get paint on your shoes, maybe your clothes would stink of diesel fumes at the end of the day, or maybe it would be something very high tech, like a drone that flew, flew across the room that you controlled with your phone that would just, you know, uh, target map your, your paper and sort of spray ink on it. Um, but, you know, I was honestly just dis extremely disappointed when I came across the yellowing uh, sort of alternate timeline, you know, weird looking copy machine that I encountered when I first was um, brought to where the Rezo was being stored so I could, I could test it out. But I pretty quickly um, realized that there was something different about this machine. The fact that you have to use these different drum cylinders, um, you know, I found kind of exciting. The fact that you it kind of feels like you're loading a nuclear warhead into a, um, you know, the mothership and you got to turn the key at the right time and run to the escape pod. There's a bit of a dystopian sort of retro sci-fi feeling to just running the machine, but you also feel like you might be, you know, you're making copies for the board meeting in 1985 and your administrative assistant. So there's something like, I like that tension. It's sort of fun. Um, you know, I knew that there was something interesting about this machine. And once I actually started using it, um, I, it completely changed the bookmaking part of my art practice. I was able to basically accelerate the, um, the speed at which I was able to, to, to make a book and, and really uh, create books that, that could actually be sold more as publications, more as zines or magazines or, you know, limited runs of not 10, but maybe 100 or 200, 300 books. Um, and truly scale up to become a publisher. So that's slowly, slowly what I did. I eventually bought a Rezo um, and I was tapped to help start the, the Rezo lab space. Um, and here's just some examples of a few things that I've published, um, mostly my work, but also I've published a lot of work by other artists as well. Um, and so I am teaching a class called uh, Rezo Graph Printing for Zines and Small Publishing. Um, and of course, we focus on zines. Of course, uh, you know, I show a lot of examples of um, zines and, and, you know, things that sort of maybe uh, wouldn't be called zines, but fall in the same category, but it's also an introductory class. So you don't have to have any Rezo printing to take this experience to take this class. Um, you will end up with a print design toolkit um, that will go over, over the first few weeks, including the concept of spot color printing, um, so just the, the basic idea of Rezo printing, which is the same principle of screen printing or any other kind of printmaking, um, you know, combining, designing images with the layers of color that you have, um, you know, posterization, uh, which is like the high contrast um, sort of Andy Warhol effect, uh, taking an image that has values and tonalities and reducing it to a high contrast version of itself, duotone, um, sort of starting to take advantage of the Rezo's ability to, to capture very fine detail by recreating grayscale images, photographs or you know, drawings, anything with value with just two colors, CMYK or faux CMYK. So taking the Rezo process and um, you know, using the CMYK process that's used for process printing with specific colors and applying Rezo colors to that process. So ending up with something where the colors are slightly off um, and also learning something about printing and commercial printing and, and you know, uh, along the way. Of course, we go over book binding techniques, both hand binding techniques and also, um, you know, and, and also a few little tricks like how to make an instant scene, a, a, a zine, of course, that's one of the first assignments. A zine that's a single sheet of paper that folds up and becomes an eight page zine, but also more complicated binding techniques and options. And all of this is sort of, um, you know, put into context of the history of printing all the way back to Gutenberg and beyond. So even the invention of woodblock printing in ancient China and movable type in China as well, um, steel face or lead, lead uh, movable type in Korea, all the way up to Gutenberg, Martin Luther, 
William Blake, you know, famous self-publisher, the sci-fi fanzines put out by these isolated nerd, nerds on farms across America in the 40s and 30s and 40s, the counterculture in the 60s, um, et cetera, et cetera. And you see the um, illustration by Emory Douglas, who was the graphic design, um, the main designer for the Black Panthers. Um, the punks, we go over a lot of stuff, uh, rave zines. Um, so if you're interested in any of these topics, right, um, you know, things that, you know, if you're an artist and you maybe you're not really so focusing on marketing, but you start to sort of, uh, you know, if you get into publishing, the next thing you know, you're running a small press, a small business, you know, you're, you, you start to think about these aspects, um, you know, how do you present, uh, for, how, do you, how do you make the work, how do you uh, present the work, uh, how do you sell the public on the work, um, you know, this class might have something um, to offer you. So there, right now there's uh, six spots left in this class. It runs on Tuesday nights, six to 10. So it's four hours. It's, um, we get a lot of printing time in class. It's a slightly compressed and slightly longer procession since uh, it's nine weeks in the summer compared to 10 weeks in the fall and spring. Um, and I will add the info in the chat. So that's all for me for now. I'm gonna be continuing to MC the night and I will present our next faculty member, who's one of our newest faculty members, Andrew Alexander, who just joined as faculty um, this past spring semester with his uh, class focusing on drawing and painting. So Andrew Alexander is a cartoonist and publisher who has self-published comics for over a decade. He graduated from SBA with his bachelor's in cartooning and, ma and master's in illustration and has been a lab technician at the Rizzo Lab for the last five years up until Sunday. So Andrew actually just, uh, he's now only, he's now just back. So sorry, Andrew, I didn't update the, the bio, but congrats on uh, on five years at the lab and capping it off and we're gonna be- Thank you, thank you. New technician. Um, so uh, during his time as an undergraduate, he formed Weekly Comics, a Brooklyn-based experimental comic collect comics collective that led him to begin his Rizograph practice. In late 2021, he formed Cram Books, a resograph focused publisher whose mantra dedicated to funny, sad, honest books acts as a mission statement for his personal work as well. Graham has published five books to date and has appeared in over a dozen comics festivals over the last year. Andrew, and probably more since uh, you sent me this bio for the last single session. Uh, Andrew has worked as a printmaker for Tommy Hilfiger, Oliver Jeffers, David Sandlin, and has a comic and has had comics in Eflux and Bubbles. So I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew. Andrew, if you want to um, take it away and bedazzle. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, let me share my screen and get this in slideshow. Can everyone see this? It's good. Cool. Um, yeah, my name is Andrew Alexander. I've been the lab technician at the Rizal Lab for six years, so it has been wonderful to see it grow. And um, I mean, it's wonderful to still be a part of it. I'm not going too far. Um, my class, which is new class i the first semester was last semester spring that we ran it was is rizzo printing for drawing and painting um it runs june 10th to august 5th it's eight weeks um uh but yeah the class is focused on the experimentation of handmade work and how it can translate through the risograph the lens of the risograph um uh the the risograph it's called a duplicator and it's kind of something that I've always been at odds with there's a, a desolation between what you actually make and what will actually come out of the risograph and the class is hopefully focused on expanding everyone's already existing practices by printing through the risograph um uh this is like the the course write-up of my class. Uh, drawing is a universal visual language. In this course, students will create artwork using the risograph by way of hand-drawn images to create a new expanse of possibilities from their work. Both new and old work will be used to extensively explore the palettes and textures and capabilities of the risograph process. Experimentation with a wide variety of tools and techniques to develop a language of mark making will be encouraged. Students will use the risograph print process to make new work and reproduce previously created projects. A new practice will emerge from the discoveries that occurred during, during this process. In class experimentations, discussions, assignments, and critique will culminate into a handmade zine project. Um, basically, it's an eight-week class for the first four 
uh, weeks, we will be doing drawing exercises and um, we will be learning the basics of the risograph. Um, all of the classes at the Rizzo Lab will teach you how to print and how to uh, print spot color and how to print CMYK. And um, I think what makes my class different is a, it's a really a focus on uh, this, this CMYK and this um, full color printmaking process. Um, this, this right here is a, uh, a codex that I made. It's based on the Mayan codexes. Uh, it's based on the story, uh, the circular ruin, and it was printed with four colors, but there was no black and instead I used purple and uh, I used teal instead of blue. So I create a lot deeper greens and uh, a different palette kind of emerges out of um, using different colors instead of the traditional blue, blue, pink, yellow, black. Um, yeah, the, the course is focused on experimentation. First week, it's all mostly drawing, and then the back half, we will be experimenting and making experimental books, uh, print projects, posters, and um, various other things. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to show work that I've printed. Uh, this piece on the left was one of the first pieces that was trying to get these subtle tones. It's kind of an experiment. When I started the lab, uh, maybe like the first few weeks, I wanted to see how subtle I can make colors and how rich I can make them by by making dense overlapping five color prints and and really trying to push the capabilities of the risograph because at the time most books that I was seeing were were uh flat color blue and pink zines um that that were thinking about the risograph differently almost like a silkscreen machine um where I was trying to approach it more like uh like it's a lithography or an offset press that can capture these subtle tones um, this is a uh, spread from Cram Comics number one, uh, the flagship title from my publisher. Um, this is by my friend Max Huffman. Uh, this is Ray Huang. Uh, it's a zine of sketchbooks. Uh, and so there's like different elements. So there's stickers and there's paintings in it and there's uh, all types of things within a sketchbook. So I wanted to see how far the risograph can represent images. Um, and I think it came out wonderful. Uh, it's Cram 2, second issue of mythology. But basically, there's a wide variety of palettes and, and textures that you can get from the risograph. And uh, the goal of the class is to explore it, even if it's just black and white drawings or full color drawings. Um, yeah, I went over the class structure. Uh, yeah, the goal is to end with uh, a zine that kind of culminates all the learning and teachings into like a a zine that has notes and experiments and, and kind of pushing your practice further than uh, it already was. Uh, the the I, I, I'm not trying to, I want people to bring their own practice in and come out with something new. That's really the goal. It's similar to a printmaking class that I had uh, across the street at the Silkscreen Lab where it was more about process and uh, seeing how far you can push something than um, me teaching you specific Photoshop things. Um, yeah. Goals come away to class with a core understanding of the risograph process, a zine containing experimentations and notes, and hopefully desire to continue making risograph work with us over at the Rizzo Lab. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, my class is June 10th to August 5th. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Back to you, Penn. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and I've been, if you want to check, uh, for those of you that are interested in signing up immediately right now before the session's over, um, if you're already convinced, uh, I'm, I'm, we're adding links to the classes in the chat. So there's a link to, to Andrew's class. There's also a link to um, the Cram Book site if you want to check out more of, more of his work and stuff that he's published. So um, next up, we have... Red McDonald, who's showing proper Rizzo um, workflow and, and, and practice. Um, Red McDonald is an illustrator, cartoonist, and editor based in Hudson Valley, New York. He's the author of the cyberpunk epic Sparks and dystopian revenge comic Cyber Realm, as well as several other self published mini comics, including the series Precinct X99. He edits the award winning comics anthology X Mag for Piao and has worked on visual development for animated shows such as The Midnight Gospel. Her commercial clients include Adidas, The New York Times, Wired, Vice, and more. Ren is currently working on a search and find book with 
Penguin Random House as of six months ago, but but um, I, believe that, I believe you've moved on to a different different projects. But uh, anyway, uh, Ren, if you want to want to go ahead and um, you know let let the people know about your classes. Um, of ahead. course, I'm happy to. Thanks, Pan. Uh, and thanks to everybody for showing up tonight and tuning in with us. Uh, happy to talk about Riso with you guys. Um, so uh, in addition to uh, all that stuff that Pan just said about me, um, I can just say that I, I've been Riso printing for, I think, like the last 10 years. I first got into Riso uh, around like 2012, 2013, uh, through some like indie comic scenes that I had bought online. And I was like, this is it. This is the stuff. Uh, so I hopped online. Um, fortunately, was able to find a risograph. Uh, I was living in Florida at that time. I fortunately was able to find a risograph that uh, I ended up buying uh, and just fell in love with the medium, uh, with the uh, tactility and the vibrancy of the ink. Um, and just the fact that like, you can be your own publisher with the risograph, you know, uh, you can, uh, it's, it's really a great DIY tool. Um, but yeah, so, so I make comics. Um, I do illustration, uh, commercially, uh, I make a bunch of prints and stuff like Rizzo prints and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, I'll just run through the classes that I teach, uh, quickly. Uh, the mini comics class that I teach, uh, it's called mini comics from page to production. Uh, and in case anyone doesn't know, many comics are comics that are typically self-published, handmade, uh, and are on the smaller side. So it's comics meets zines, right? Um, and many comics, I've, I've always just really loved the format a lot. Like I'm a big fan of just DIY stuff. Um, I like that uh, a lot of times when I'm reading a mini comic, that's coming straight from like the artist's, the artist's uh, mind and their hand to my hand and mind. And I think that's that's a lot of fun. Um, I just love handmade stuff. I love DIY stuff. Um, so mini comics, it's, it's, it's really great for that. Uh, and in addition to all of that, it's a great place to experiment, uh, when you're working on comics. Uh, so as opposed to like working on like a, a book length comic project, that's, you know, like 200 pages or something that's going to take you like two years, uh, mini comic, you can really like take risks with, you know, uh, and that's what I encourage students to do in the mini comics class. Uh, but the mini comics class, it is quite structured uh, because the goal uh, at the end of the class is to have a finished mini comic. Uh, and comics, uh, they're difficult. They take a lot of time. Um, and so I designed the, the course to be very structured, to kind of give everyone uh, tools to easily go from point A to point B uh, and have a finished mini comic. So this is the step-by-step -step process that we follow in the class. We start with ideas, outlines, uh, thumbnail sketches, rough art, final art, color setup, uh, printing, and finally binding. Um, along the way, we also discuss risograph printing basics. So uh, that's going to be like analog printing, printing from the glass, uh, limited spot color printing, multicolor printing, duotone printing, Focium YK printing. Uh, and then we are going to talk about zine basics as well, uh, just because, you know, like I said, many comics are zines. So uh, that will be assembling, uh, cutting, binding, all that stuff. Um, what we'll create throughout the course is uh, single sheet zines. Um, we'll start out with that just to get everyone uh, some experience on actually making something. Um, and uh, a variety of prints along the way while I introduce the new techniques to you. Uh, but the the main focus of the class is a 12 to 20 page mini comic from start to finish. So uh, the structure, it's 10 sessions long. Uh, I would say it's a 60-40 split focus on comics and Riso. Uh, so each week when like, for example, the homework will be come in with an outline of your comic or be uh, or come in with thumbnail sketches you'll bring those in that class. And as a class, we'll discuss. Uh, and you, so for example, say you thumbnailed out the first four pages of your comic uh, and you feel really good about it, but you're stuck on something. And so that's where the, the class as a whole can really uh, help you out and you can get some feedback uh, and it can help you to continue working on your comic. Uh, the first half of the class is a bit more rigorous, focusing on technique and discussion. The remainder will have more of a focus on completing your mini comics. 
And by the last class, each student will have a printed uh, will have printed enough copies of their finished mini comics so that everyone in the class can have one. So that's always fun. Uh, this is an example of some student work uh, from the past, but it's always fun coming in the last day of class. Uh, everyone has just like stacks of their finished mini comics, and we all trade. And everyone goes home with a stack of mini comics to read on the train home, which is really fun. Um, and, and yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So like I said, comics is hard work, but it's fun. Uh, we're going to get our hands dirty. We're going to experiment. We're going to learn about this technology in the lab of Rizzo. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, and here's the, the specs. And I'm sure there's a link in the chat. Uh, and the other class that I teach that I want to discuss is Rizzo Printing and Introduction. Oh, actually, before I move on to this. Uh, so I, I talked about uh, my mini comics class being very like structured and narrative based. So I do teach from a perspective that um, uh, encourages the cartoonists that, and the students that sign up for the class to take a narrative approach to the comics. So if that's not your bag, I really recommend Aiden's class, which is art books and uh, abstract comics. It's a really, really great course. Uh, Aiden's great. He knows a lot about Rizzo. Uh, he knows a lot about art books. Um, so if you want a less uh, structured, less narrative approach, I really recommend checking out Aiden's course. Um, anyways, back to my uh, Rizzo printing and introduction class. Uh, so this is where students can sign up to learn a wide range of research techniques and how to apply them to their practice. So the focus of this class is more technique driven uh, as opposed to the mini comics class where it's all uh, learning the technique with a specific goal in mind. This is more so about diving deep into all the techniques that you can use when you're resograp printing. So analog printing, spot color printing, uh, multicolor printing, duotone, posterization, focine YK. Uh, we're gonna talk about scene basics. And I also get in a bit into uh, community uh, in this class because I think, um, Resograph printing, like I've said before, it is a DIY medium, uh, and with DIY always comes community. Um, and so I, I talk about how to uh, engage with the, the thriving Resograph community here in New York, uh, and also uh, talking about stuff like uh, exhibiting at art book fairs uh, or uh, indie comics fairs, stuff like that. So um, the goal of the class is going to be a print series. Um, or any sort of print project that you want to uh, take on based on the techniques that we go over. So what we create almost new test prints every single week uh, based on the technique that we're uh, focusing on and then uh, whatever final project you want to do. So the structure of this class is also 10 sessions. The first 60% of the class will focus on rigorous technique and discussion. The remainder will focus on completing a print series. Um, and by the final class, each student will bring in their print series to discuss and trade with other students in the class. So this one's a lot of fun too. Uh, the, the last class, the last class, even though it's kind of bittersweet because you know it's it's the end of class, everyone is going home. Um, it's always a blast just to see like the wide variety of work that uh, people come in with. Um, yeah, join the class. Uh, this is an example of my class before last. Uh, and it, it was so cool in the final class just to see the wide variety of work. So, for example, uh, on the, the far right, this student created a zine uh, that was full of his friend's photography. Uh, this student here created an accordion book of uh, some digital art. This person created a set of trading cards. This person created a calendar. This person uh, wanted to translate their painting work into risograph. Um this person made like a zine of drawings they had done over the course of like the whole past year. Uh, so it's it's just like a ton of fun uh, to see what everyone comes in with. Uh, and then here's the, the specs on this course as well. And then finally, I also just want to mention uh, the boot camp that I do. So the boot camp is tailored to students who have already taken an online class. Um, because the boot camp is tailored to students that have a little bit of Rizzo knowledge already. It's it's just kind of like rapid fire. Hey, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Let's just uh, put it put all that theory into action. Um, so uh, if you've taken an online class, you're you're good to hop in the boot camp. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's just a weekend long, and then afterwards you have uh, uh, I think it's six weeks to uh, sign up time um in the lab and just print whatever you want based on the uh the skills that we will learn there and i also want to mention if there's anyone that has rezo experience uh under their belt um 
and they're interested in the boot camp, uh, shoot me an email, shoot Pan an email or Aiden an email, uh, and uh, we can discuss uh, the possibility of you moving past the prerequisite for getting into the boot camp. Um, and here's the specs on that. And uh, and that's all I have. So if you have any questions, I think we're going to do questions at the end. But uh, thanks for thanks for listening to me ramble on. Thanks, Ren. Um, and yeah, so uh, as uh, as Ren mentioned, we'll be okay. I see the questions are coming. We're gonna we're gonna collect all the questions and tackle them uh, in a few minutes because we only have one more presenter who is Aiden Fitzgerald. Let me pull up your updated slide. Um, let's see. All right, so our last presenter of the evening, news second newest faculty member, actually after Andrew, Aiden Fitzgerald, um, who's teaching, also teaching a boot camp, also teaching the online courses and his artist book, art books and abstract comics course. Um, Aiden Fitzgerald received a BFA in painting and drawing from the University of Washington. He was the co-founder of the Free Seattle All Comics Newspaper Intruder and the graphic designer for the Seattle Small Press Festival April. He started Cold Cube Press in 2015 and dedicated his art, art practice to publishing and showcasing other artists and illustrators. Over the years, Cold Cube has published over 120 artists and writers from all over the world. He was the managing editor of Grandma Poetry and has taught classes at Western Washington University, Hugo House in Seattle, and Seattle Central Community College, and now the School of Visual Arts in New York. He lives and works in New York City. So. Aiden, I'm gonna let you um, take it from there. All right, thank you. Thank you, Pan. And uh, thank you all for showing up and thanks for that uh, shout out, Ren, uh, a second ago. Um, yeah, so I teach uh, an online course um, that is basically like intro to risograph printmaking. Um, and that's because as it is online, you can be anywhere all over the globe. Uh, and I also teach an in-person course, uh, which is art books and abstract comics. I'm going to go into a little bit about what I cover in the uh, online course, which is basically like the basics of uh, file preparation for Rezo printing. Uh, but also just to sort of repeat a point that we made earlier, a lot of these classes, we do cover how to print on a Rezo. Uh, it's just that uh, the online course is just focused on file preparation without any on machine experience, right? So with that in mind, I'm just going to start my little spiel here. Um, yeah, as Pan mentioned, I started a Rezograph Press back in 2015 called Cold Cube Press. Here I am at Comic Arts Brooklyn, I believe this is 2017, maybe 2016, um, back in the, uh, in the old days, the pre-pandemic days. Um, so I have been making uh, art books, both my own uh, art books and then publishing other artists' books uh, for almost a decade now, exclusively on the Rezograph. Uh, Aiden, Aiden, I, I think uh, I think we can't see your screen. If you want to try one more, oh, time. haha! I have to uh, click the share screen button. Don't uh, don't let that fool you into thinking that I'm not a competent online teacher. I, he was, I he was just remember. testing us. Yeah, I, <laughs> you you caught me. Uh, I always remember to share my screen when I'm teaching online. Um, so yeah, here's young me. 2016 me uh, at Comic Arts Brooklyn way back when. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of go through the general outline of the uh, intro to um, uh, print design for risograph printing class. But also this does match the exact uh, sort of skill set that you'll learn in my in-person art books and abstract comics course, uh, which is basically we start with the sort of the fundamental building blocks of risograph printing, which is this idea of the risograph as a spot color machine. Right, so it's a sort of an all-in-one uh, printing press, uh, and where we want to print colors, we have to make sure that we set up our files in black and white. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, spoil the class for you, but that's a big part of the uh, the agenda, shall we say? Uh, but yeah, so we start off with spot colors. Here's a piece that I published from a book called "Won't to Can't." Uh, we can see the spot colors are orange, black, and mint. Um, and then here's spot colors are getting more and more complicated, right? We're gonna learn how to layer our colors to mix and make new colors. One of the best parts about the Rezo ink is that it is fully translucent. Well, not fully translucent, but it's uh, not fully opaque, right? So you can overlay colors and mix uh, to make these wonderful, almost unnameable colors here. And then all the way, moving all the way up into some really complex spot color printing. So here's a piece that I published by Daria Tesler. This was in my third anthology back in 2017. 
Um, and then here's a use of spot color that is from a different anthology, but you know, spot color doesn't have to be every color you can imagine. It can also be really controlled use of just two colors can really have a wonderful effect. So this is a piece by Jesse Eng that I published in my sixth anthology. Uh, and then beyond spot colors, we get into printing photography, right? So this is a photo by Carrie Mae Weems from her kitchen table series. And I always start with this photo, both because I love this photo, but also because it has a great range of like values, right? Uh, and so we're going to go into printing photos uh, and specifically into printing photos into duotones, right? So here's one of my favorite sculptures. It's called the Dying Gaul. Um, and really what we're looking at uh, is sort of how the Rizzo can create these gradations of tone. Uh, and that can be applicable to illustration work or artwork, or it can be applicable to photo work, right? So here's the same photo in two different um, risograph printing techniques, right? So we're going to kind of dive into not just how the Rizzo works, but why we're going to choose, you know, grain touch over here on the right versus uh, screen tone on the left and when those would come up. And then the last part of the course, and this would be, you know, week five or six of my art books class, which is to say halfway through, we start getting into four color printing. So CMYK printing. Uh, this is a print set by a Seattle based artist named Aaron Halligan that I did. And so it's nice because I can kind of show you all four colors. Here's aqua. Here's aqua and yellow. Here's aqua, yellow, and black. And here's aqua, yellow, black, and fluorescent pink. So we're going to learn how to make all these colors mix together. But you can see how this is sort of basically using um, risograph inks as almost like watercolor paint or gouache, right? But this exact same palette of colors is also used to make, to print these photos, right? So in my uh, online course, basically, we're going to look at how to use these um, Rizzo printers to really get the full range of work that we want to come out of it, right? Um, here's another piece that I published by Nina Costco. This is once again the same, the same colors as this right here. Um, and then uh, just to, to sort of finish up on my um, online course, this is just a couple of the pieces that my students have made. Um, and all of these students had absolutely zero experience on the Rizzo before uh, they set up these files um to be printed and so they came you know if you if you have no experience with the Rizzo or even if you have no experience on Photoshop um this is a great way to learn not only how to set up files in Photoshop but also how to sort of set up all types of printmaking um from the computer to you know go from your your handmade image or maybe digital illustration to something that is print ready um and like I said before all of these techniques will be covered in my art books course uh, but because my art books class is in the print lab, uh, we will also be printing everything as well, whereas my online course is just about how to set up our files, right? So I do have two sessions of this course. The first one starts um, first week of June and goes until the second week of July. And the second session starts the day before, July 11th, goes until the second week of August, right? So um, first session is on Wednesdays from 7 to 9 Eastern Standard. Second session is Tuesdays. I don't know how long y'all plan your summers. I cannot plan anything in July, in May, but you know maybe you're more competent than I am in those regards. Um, but yeah, so this is my online course. It's perfect for people that are uh, not in New York City, of course. Um, if you've just uh, got a Rezo and you wanna learn how to set up your files well, this is a great course for you to check that out. Um, also, if you are a student in school, if you're an undergraduate or a graduate and the school has a Rezo, but they don't really have a technician, they don't have a class. I've had a lot of students that have said, oh, like, I'm a student at BYU, we just got a Rezo, nobody knows how to use it, and then I teach them how to use it and they can sort of apply it to their practice. Uh, the other thing is that if you are an artist and you are thinking about having somebody else make your Rezo prints, if you take my online course, I guarantee you, as somebody who does print for clients, uh, I guarantee you, you will be a Rezo printer's dream, right? Because I'm going to teach you how to set up your files just right, perfectly, so that everything is going to print uh, really smoothly and consistently, and also so that you can anticipate how everything will look uh, Rezo printed, right? So that's my online course. And then my... Um, in-person course is called Art Books and Abstract Comics, and it's a uh, four-hour studio. Uh, we go for 10 weeks um, from the first week of June until the second week of August, and it's called Art Books and Abstract Comics. 
And we cover everything in, in the class that I just went over on my intro to print design for Rezo, but we cover it in person. And as you are in the Rezo lab, you have the opportunity to apply what you learn directly onto the machine every day. Um, these are the goals of the class. We sort of develop a typology or classification system of art books and abstract comics. Basically, um, we're going to look at all these different variety of art books and be able to each one of us sort of say, in our minds, kind of delineate like, oh, this is a photo book, this is a comic, this is more of a collection of drawings, sort of create this continuum of art books. Um, understand the numerous possibilities of art books and abstract comics. Learn how to apply these concepts to our broader art practice. So kind of like what Andrew was talking about with his course, uh, this is a great class if you already have an art practice, you don't necessarily have to have one, but if you already have a way of making work, uh, this is a great course for you to sort of experiment with new ways uh, of producing that and experimenting with making books with that. Um, compile a body of work into several publications from start to finish. Every one of my students comes back with like, I think six books, right? So we print an anthology, everybody prints their personal book. There's a grid book, there's a collaborative book, there's a single page book. And then there is this sort of uh, mystery book, which I don't want to give away, but it's sort of like a, a collaborative, ex almost an exquisite corpse type thing. But we make a lot of books uh, in my class. Um, and every single week, you will have time on the printer. So especially this past quarter, uh, when it was really busy in the lab, I know a lot of my students were really thankful that uh, it's a four hour studio so they could have uh, you know, a lot of time on the machines each week. Uh, each week I bring in um, books from my collection of art books. So these are all books that I bring in. At the beginning of the class, we just look at books for like 15 minutes and students can ask questions. How did they do this? What is that color? You know, why don't we have Kelly Green, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, we sort of jump off from there. Each of the books that I bring in pertains to whatever we're learning that week, right? Uh, and also, as it is an abstract comics course, and uh, ab the word abstract is in the title, I am contractually obligated to talk about abstract art and put my Bachelor of Fine Arts to use, right? So we do go into a little bit of the history of um, abstraction, or at least just examples of different types of abstraction, right? Um, this is an Eli Lisitsky piece here. This is a Julie Moretu piece there. So this piece is from, uh, I believe the 1920s, maybe 1910s in Russia. And this is from uh, a couple of years ago here in New York. Julie Moretu is an amazing painter. Um, we also will break down comics into their um, uh, uh, sort of abstract components, right? Because it is an abstract comics course, right? So here's a page from Astro Boy. And this is an assignment that we work on where we're basically taking a, a sheet, uh, of, like a comic, or maybe just any drawing and breaking it down into its abstract components. And then we're going to use this abstraction as a sort of a jumping off point for our own work, right? Uh, and we're also going to look at just all the different types of art books that you can make with the Rezo and all these different sort of examples. Uh, this is a book called Signs and Artifacts that Secret Rezo Clubs publishes. It's basically a collection of the sort of signs and artifacts of a specific neighborhood in New York, right? So this is Ridgewood. Um, one class, I will talk about text and image, so it gets into sort of poetry comics almost, and mostly just how text and image can interact in art books and um, all the possibilities there. And then these are just some of the assignments that I assign, right? So this is the one of the first collaborative books. This is a book on the grid. We focus a lot on the grid for one of the classes. Um, the final course, the final uh, project in the class is an anthology of every student's work that we all print together, right? So. Uh, we get the paper, we determine the print size, we determine the colors that we're going to be using, and we all print uh, this book together. Every student gets their own spread in the anthology. And then um, every student also has a single concept art book. So basically, it's a, uh, it's a personal book um, similar to Ren's mini comics course. Everybody is going to make their own personal book and also enough for everybody else to take home. So if I have a class of, you know, 20 students, everybody makes you know, 21, right? So one for me, one for you, and then one for each one of the other students uh, in the class. So everybody gets to go home with a lot of books at the end of the year. And these are just some of the um, uh, sort of single concept uh, books that, that we have made in the course. This is a snapshot of everybody sort of collating some work together during one of my classes. And yeah, it is uh, June 5th to August 14th. Um, like I said, it is a four-hour studio, so there is a lot of printing time 
uh, under my sort of supervision and tutelage. I know that this is a little bit of a spicy price tag, but as it is 10 weeks, basically $7, $70 a week to um, make some wonderful books uh, under under my tutelage. So um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Aiden. Um, okay, so now we have time for some Q&A and we, there's already a few Looks like we already have a few questions that are backed up. So I'm gonna just scroll up to the, the first person, the first yeah. question. Came the in. first question is for me um, yeah. from Margaret. Um, and you, you, you're worried about missing one class in the mini comics class. Um, don't be, it's it's fine. We'll, we'll catch you up um, and, and make sure you're on track. I, I would really just recommend not missing the first two classes because that's when we really lay the foundation for everything we're going to be doing in the rest of the course. But uh, if, if you need to like miss a class in the middle sometime, no worries, no worries. Um, and then uh, I think from Christina, I, I think there's also a question for me. Um, uh, can a newbie Teresa participate in the mini comics class? Absolutely. It's designed for beginners, uh, both uh, in uh, comics and Risa Graph. Uh, definitely for Riso, I would recommend because we're, the goal is to make a mini comic from start to finish in such a, such a short period of time, I recommend having some sort of uh, image making like under your belt so that you can confidently just sit down and draw or collage or do whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, newbie to Riso, definitely, absolutely. Um, and then in the introduction class, can we choose our final project from binding books to accordion, um, that you would like to make? Yeah, it's, it's really up to you in the intro class. Your final project is totally up to you based on the techniques that I go through. Um, I do not cover a wide range of binding techniques in the Riso class. I show you the basics of zine binding. Um, but if you want to bring uh, some prior knowledge that you have uh, about more uh, extensive or creative binding techniques, uh, or if you want to go out and learn it like over the course of the class, then absolutely bring that in. You're welcome to implement any of that stuff. Um, and then also I saw there's a question about Photoshop. Uh, one thing I always forget to mention, um, but anyone enrolled in any of these courses gets uh, Adobe Creative Cloud or Creative Suite um, for the duration of the semester. Um, and in my classes, at least, I do do Photoshop demos. Uh, they are designed for Photoshop beginners. Um, uh, so yeah, ho hopefully it won't be an issue. We do print from Photoshop, but uh, if you're not a digital artist, that's absolutely 100% okay. Um, you can create all the all the work analog, you know, drawing, painting, uh, pen on paper, whatever you want. Uh, basically, you just have to scan it in. So basically, you have to digitize, it, and then we print it from Photoshop. So it's as simple as that. And that and that's a really good question. That's something a lot of people um, ask. I think I think all of at least for my class, I'm happy to work with uh, beginners who are you know people who are not super well versed with the Adobe Creative Cloud. I I personally think um, using Photoshop and Illustrator and these different programs specifically uh, towards the goal of making a Rezo print is a great way to learn these programs. Period. And and you can actually apply though that approach. To just you know other other design um, other design sort of workflows for you know for things that have nothing to do with print or Rezo, um, and and actually even if you do have a lot of experience with Photoshop but not for print, you might actually have to you know it might be a, a totally different way of using the program. So if, so in terms of my course, it's all right. And you know maybe if Aiden and Aiden and Andrew, I don't know if you have um, if you want people to have a little bit of experience or what you're I, my online course is uh, yeah I, I there's no experience necessary and I think that I learned all of my Photoshop and Illustrator experience through Rezo printing. Um, if you don't have any experience, it's a great way to learn. For my abstract comics course, same deal. Uh, you can you can kind of learn Photoshop um, or Illustrator or Procreate as we're sort of learning the, the class. But yeah, sort of like what piggybacking on what Ren said, if you have experience like image making or like following through with the project from start to finish, that's probably the most, uh, I think ambition and dedication are probably more important than Photoshop experience. Yeah, same same with my class. Um, you don't need Photoshop experience, but you'll learn in class. And um, yeah, it's kind of a good starting place to learn Photoshop if you haven't used it before. 
And, and you can also use these machines in a completely analog way. They have a glass scanning bed, so you can actually completely avoid using the computer if, if you, for, you know, for, for certain projects, it'll be hard to avoid like CMYK or maybe Duotone because those involve transforming the image in a certain way in Photoshop um, or other programs. But, um, but yeah, you can also just use it just with physical color separation. So um, another question is from Clayton. Um, so Clayton won't be around for the summer courses. You're wondering about the fall classes. Um, uh, I don't have them. the The courses for the fall, the classes usually start uh, towards the end of September or early October, and we have like a loose idea of the dates. So, um, if you want to reach out to me, I'm going to um, email. You know, you probably all got my email right before the session. Just kind of checking, and make sure you all got the link. So, I'm going to send you all a follow up email afterwards. Um, and you know, with with links to the, the classes and, and everyone's websites, and so you can kind of do more research if you're still deciding. Um, and Clayton, if you want to reach out to me um, in response to that email, I'll I'll try to get to you those specific dates. But just loosely, roughly, the classes run in the fall for about ten weeks again, from the very beginning of October or end of September through um, the very beginning of December or end of November, depending on dates and holidays and things like that. We're going to be offering all the same classes, um, except for Ren's mini comics class is going to be instead of teaching that in the fall, he's going to be teaching a class for illustrators. Um, that is another brand new class that we're excited about. So, and I think the mini comics class might come back in the spring, and you know we'll we'll see what happens down the line. The drawing class that Andrew teaches on Saturday mornings is going to be extended to 10 week class in the fall and will run on Friday nights. So that's those are the two changes I can share with you right now. Apart from that, we're offering all the same classes. Um, OK, so. And yeah, Clayton, you, you can always follow up with me afterwards, uh, send me an email. Um, Sherry's asking about uh, learning Rezo to sell Rezo prints. Um, well, I mean, you know, that's exactly that's probably what I'd say you know, eight out of 10 people who take courses with us um, have have in mind, or at least to experiment with the medium and see if they if that, that's an option for them if, apart from experimenting. Um, the second question, do you, we know, do we know where you can buy a research printer? That's a complicated question and that, that kind of changes based on, you know, just the secondhand market, what your budget is, what your goals are, all that stuff. And actually the nice thing about the Rezo Lab is, you know, we're not with the with the fact that we exist as a resource. Um, if you can take a class and you can pay the lab access fee, you don't actually have to buy a Rezo. You can just use our machines and avoid. You know, if it breaks down, it's our problem and we have to get it fixed. For example, um, so and a lot of people have taken a class with us and then used our space as a production facility. And then down the line, once they, you know, that they they just you know their their printing needs kind of are more than than what they're able to print at our space. Um, which by the way, you can print up to about six hours per week um, and sometimes a little bit more, um, then sometimes they'll, they'll buy a Rezo and launch their own press, which is something that all of us have experience with. So we can, we can each, we can share our, our own experience with you in class. Um, Mary's asking, can the Rezo printing pick look similar to a silk screen pick? Um, Rezo, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you can design a Rezo. I mean, Rezo essentially is screen printing. It's just that, it uses ink that doesn't dry as quickly as acrylic base screen printing ink. And the openings are very, very small in a Rezo screen. But it's basically, it's, it's as if you took a silk screen and turned it into a cylinder and then put it in a machine that prints automatically. So you, but you can get results that look like lithography or that look like, um, you know, you can capture more subtle effects like uh, something that looks like a, a pencil drawing or watercolor. So it's in, in a way it's even, you have an expanded range of values you can print. Um, you can't use a Rezo to print on t-shirts. You can't print on wood. You can't run a piece of glass through a Rezo. So it doesn't replace silkscreen, but I think it complements the whole suite of printmaking tools, you know, if you have that kind of background. Um, and, you know, if, if Ren, Aiden, Andrew, if you guys want to jump in, um, you know, feel free. Um, okay, so Kyle is asking, you're currently studying undergrad at SVA. If you took any of these summer Rezo classes, can you start using Rezo during the fall spring semester after paying levy? Absolutely. Um, you, you take one class, you're essentially, you're certified kind of for life. We don't really have a cutoff date. 
but we have had students we, or you know adults continuing education students who take a class they get busy with life they come back a few years later and now that we have post pandemic we've got these boot camp classes which are technically that that's like the hands on the the meat um, the sort of the the workflow part of um, half of the you know that the online course so you take the online course and then you know sometimes we will we have um, you know we had students that come back after a few years and take a boot camp just to get refreshed on the on the medium um, or they or they take a class with another another instructor but yes you would you could just then pay a lab access fee um, Kyla my I teach an undergrad class but I know that both all four sections in the fall and spring are all totally booked. So um, we're, we're hoping to add more undergrad classes uh, soon. Um, all right, uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to, you can also turn off, turn on your mic if you wanna just sort of chime in. Kyla, yes, it's six hours printing per week outside of class. So if you were in my class or Andrew's class for four hours a week, you still are allowed to come into the lab and print six hours a week outside of that. Um, let's see, a new question just came in. Um, Rizzo with my class, Rizzo and small, Rizzo for zines and small publishing course, we recommend it for someone who has experience with publishing or is it geared towards beginners? All these classes are, potentially geared towards beginners, um, but there's often a nice range of students uh, in, in, at least in my classes I have, there's some total beginners and there's some, you know, artists who have some experience with zines, um, but it's, it's geared towards uh, you having absolutely no knowledge of, of print or even Photoshop, but some kind of visual practice um, I think is important and helps. Um, that being said, if, if you're not really sure what kind of images you want to make, period, um, I, I think taking, taking Ren's class, the intro class is sort of, um, that might be a good way to explore what kind of images you want to make. Um, uh, or also Aiden's class, I think is pretty open-ended, just, just in the sense that from what I know of Aiden's class, because Aiden, you go into the nuts and bolts and really break down images and you're talking about abstraction. I think, you know, you're, you're dealing um, very specifically with like a way to look at art um, while, while, you know, the students are also learning the Rezo process. So I show a range of different, you know, all kinds of different zines, some zines that are even just text, um, like, a, like a pamphlet, um, you know, that might be from some, some militant vegans or something. And I'm, actually, I don't have any pamphlets from militant vegans, but, you know, something like that, you know, it, or a, or a pamphlet on gardening, you know, can that be considered a zine? Um, but Aiden's class is focused, the content uh, in the context is more focused in terms of the images. So um, hope that answers your question. Um, any, other, any other questions? Um, I'm, I'm gonna put the, so I'm gonna once again add the, we have, so we have a, we have a, I've been putting links to the visual, to the SCA continuing education um, main general web website that has the actual, uh, you know, where, where you can actually, you know, sign up for these classes, but our own website, the Rezo Lab website, um, we have a page where we list everything, including the open lab access option. So you can get a sense of like, what that would be down the road, if you're interested, you know, full, what, what the cost of a full, um, semester access um, looks like or a half semester access um, and you know click around while you're there check out our, our site it's both it's both a showcase of the work our students have done and some events we've had plus our amazing faculty and staff like um, Sarula Bao's recent uh, Rezo printed cover for the New Yorker that was printed at the lab among other things um, okay so someone's asking uh, if you have more questions to ask after the meeting. Um, so I'm going to reach out to all of you. Um, you can respond to me. I will also add, I'm gonna CC um, Aiden, Ren, and Andrew in the email. So you can just respond, you know, you'll see their, their email, you can reach out to them directly or reach out to all of us, um, you know, if, if you have more things on your mind. So we're, we're open to, to, to questions. Um, any, other, any other questions or? Anything that you guys want to mention, Ren or Aiden 
Andrew? Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you all for, um, for sticking around. We went a little bit over. I do encourage you, if you're interested, to check out. I'm going to just drop the MFA visual narrative or MFA VN um, link. Let's see. Okay, so this, this is ongoing right now. If you're interested in taking a comedy class or a class focused on, um, you know, comics journalism uh, or creative writing, uh, hop onto that, that other meeting that is in progress right now. So um, I'll be sending you all a follow-up email with links and we're gonna be, I'm gonna be posting the recording of this session because um, sometimes we're mobbed with participants. Like we had 70 people at the last one and other times people, you know, get busy. So um, there'll be a chance to kind of, if you miss part of the meeting, to kind of go over what we said at the beginning. So um, hope you all have a great night. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you either in the lab or, or online. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, everybody.